Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to read a wiring diagram for a heat pump. So it's crucial to know how to read a wiring diagram so you don't get overwhelmed when you see a big jumbled mess of wires and you don't know exactly everything that's going on. So I want you to be able to understand how the system works, how to wire it, and also how to troubleshoot it. But it's crucial to first start off with being able to read the wiring diagrams over here and the legend in order to find the components and figure out what's actually happening in the system. So I'm going to take you in for an up-close view of our wiring diagrams and of each of the components here. So here we have our up-close view and we have our connection diagram, our schematic diagram, and our legend. So the con connection diagram right here, that shows you how to wire in components and then how to find components by following the wires. This right here, you have your schematic diagram. That's going to show you the, the quickest, shortest path to electrically explain what's happening here. So our legend tells you the abbreviations of each of the component names because you can't fit them on the actual diagrams. And the legend also tells you the different lines and the indicators for those. Your bold lines right here and right here are for your high voltage, and that's the dotted line being the field power wiring, which you can see up in your connection diagram for your L1, L2 power supply. And right here you see CONT, and CONT means contactor, and that's a contactor right there. So we're talking about the uh, power wiring coming into the, the bottom of this contactor here, which this one's not wired in right now. And then also right over here you have your, your smaller line, is the factory control wiring for your 24 volt low voltage wires and then you have your dotted line and that's for your field control wiring. So right here you see your dotted line that's indicating that's where you're connecting your, your outdoor unit low voltage wires to. And then down below this you see your indoor unit. Well this unit is your outdoor unit so it's going to be everything from here up. So this is your outdoor unit. On your legend you have your conductor on your circuit board so that's the thick line. So these are your conductors on your circuit board. So here's your circuit board. That's a defrost control board. And you have your component connection points, which is a circle, and then your, your terminals, which here's a terminal right here. If you look at right on your board, your Y connects to Y. So this Y right here, if you can see that, that's where your, your wire gets connected to for your thermostat wire. But then that connects right over to this yellow right here and that happens on the circuit path of the board. Let me quickly go over some of the symbols found on this diagram that's not found on the legend such as this right here LPS that's a low pressure switch and that's the indicator for pressure. This is a normally closed switch so it will open when the uh, pressure gets lower. Over here you have a temperature switch and it will open on a temp rise and then over here you have a a high pressure switch and if the pressure gets too high it will open up. So temperature, pressure, anytime you see a circle like this with your coils that's a motor. So here's a motor, here's a motor, this one is the OFM, that's the outdoor fan motor. This one right here is the compressor, COMP, and you see that there's a thermal limit on the common tap and that will open up the compressor uh, so you're not going to be able to run the compressor if it's overheated and that would mean maybe it's having a hard time starting or something like that. Instead of burning out these windings over here, you're opening up the thermal overload inside the compressor. Over here you have on your contactor a coil. So this is, your, this is actually your 24-volt coil that will close the contacts right here. So these are normally open contacts that will close anytime that you apply 24 volts on this coil. Anytime you see a set of contacts that are open like this, what that means is that they're normally open. They don't always stay open. They're just normally open, and if you see a relay coil on the side, that means that when you power the relay, it will close the normally open contacts. This right here is a resistor. It's actually an electric resistance crankcase heater. That's CH, and that's what it would look like. And this particular unit does not have one, but this would be wrapped around the compressor if you had one. So... Sometimes these wiring diagrams will have extra components that you actually don't have on the system. You really have to look around and see if you, if you have these particular items. And in this case, we don't have to worry about this whole section right here. And if you were to look at the contactor, you have a black wire, and that black wire is going over to SR. Well, guess what? 
We don't have an SR either. That's a start relay. That's actually a 5 to 1 relay. So if we had one of those, it would look like this. And we don't have one of those on this system. And you see right next to it, the SC, a start capacitor. That's this. And once again, we don't have a start capacitor on this as well. So this black wire coming up to the crankcase heater, you can just ignore that. This black wire going to the potential relay, you can ignore that. And what you're left with is a black wire that goes to the common tap on the compressor right here. And then you have another wire that is coming over to OF1. So right here, you have this wire right here going to the compressor. And then you have this wire going up to OF1 right up here. Over here on your schematic diagram, you can see your crankcase heater right here once again. And you can just ignore this because we don't have it on this one. And the 521 relay, you can ignore that as, as well as the start capacitor. There's one more component that this system does not have and it does not have the ST, that's the start thermistor. And that is this right here, it's a PTC thermistor. So on a heat pump, you may just have the capacitor defrost control board and the contactor out here, or you may have a potential relay along with a start capacitor, or you may have a PTC thermistor. So the whole point of that is just to increase the torque and lower the current for the compressor startup. If you want to learn more about the 521 potential relay or the PTC thermistor, I have videos on how they work and also troubleshooting on them down in the description section below. We also have a video down in the description section below that discusses how an air handler and heat pump work and how they're controlled by 24 volt wires. Now I want to get into how this defrost board works and I'm going to explain that by looking at the schematic diagram and also the connection diagram. So what happens here is anytime that you supply 24 volts to the Y right here, you're turning the compressor on. So right here, this Y, and that connects right over to this Y. And then you have your yellow wire right here. So what you have is this Y connects to Y and then it comes down to the low pressure switch. And you can come over here to see the color wire. So on this defrost board, you have Y goes through the yellow pink wire over to the low pressure switch. And then it continues over to the discharge temperature switch, which is right on the outlet of the compressor. And then it goes over through the high pressure switch. So if any one of those are open, signaling that there's a problem, then you're not going to get your 24 volts over to the side of the contactor. So right here, uh, each of these switches are normally closed. Now, you have your power wire over at the contactor, and that is this wire right here. It's the blue-pink wire, as you can see right here. And then you have, on the other side of the coil, you have a brown wire. And that brown, if you follow it down, it comes over to the C-terminal, which is right up here. And the C-terminal is the common, and that's the 24-volt path back to the transformer. So getting back to over here, you see that there's two low voltage wires right on the side of the contactor, and that's right here. So this, your, your blue pink wire, has already gone through your pressure switches, and then it connects right here to this yellow. At the same time, it is powering this contactor. It's sucking this normally open set of contacts inwards, and it's closing them. At the same time, you're connecting over to this yellow wire, which then comes over to T1. So you have power over to T1 now from right here. So you can see that. So anytime it comes into T1, now we're going to go over to our schematic diagram to see kind of what's happening now. So we've gone through the pressure switches over to the contactor and we are touching the wires together, coming over to T1. Now we're going over to our defrost relay. And if we look over on the legend, the defrost relay, what that says is it's defrost relay and circuitry, all right? So you have a relay that right there, but it's not connecting over to C, so you're not powering that quite yet. You have a timer on the board, and it has to do with the cumulative runtime over here. So you can select 30, 60, or 90 seconds. It says it right here, 30, 60, or 90 seconds for when you want the defrost to occur. However, you have not only a timer, but you'll also have your DFT, and DFT is your defrost temperature sensor. 
So your DFT, which is right here, your, your two pink wires, if we come over to our connection diagram, you can see DFT and your two pink wires. You, you see the DFT is normally open. And what's, what's going to happen is it's going to close on a temperature fall. So basically, when the temperature lowers on the, the defrost temperature sensor, which is mounted on the outdoor coil. So once that reaches about 30 degrees, it's going to close. Because if it's below 32 degrees, that means that the coil has frost on it. So not only do you have to have your cumulative runtime, you also have to have your DFT closed and then what's going to happen is defrost is going to occur on this board. So, 24 volts, your, your red R, that always is 24 volt hot. So if your R is going over to your DFT and that's closed and then it comes out, comes to this board, to the logic on the board, it's going to initiate defrost. And what's going to happen is three things are going to happen. So your defrost relay is right in this box right here. Anytime you see a black box, that's a relay. And when that powers, it's going to open these normally closed contacts. And this system is running in heating mode, which means your fan is running. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna shut your outdoor fan off. It's gonna open up the electrical circuit. At the same time, your R right here is going to go to right here and here. So you're gonna have 24 volts and this contact is going to close and this contact is going to close and all of a sudden you're going to have W2 has 24 volts on it. So W2 is an output wire. It's the only output, output wire on this board and that's going to your electric resistance at your indoor air handler and that's running while you're in defrost. And the reason for that is is because basically this outdoor unit is turning back into air conditioning mode to melt the fins to defrost the, the ice or the frost off the fins. So while it's in air conditioning mode, it's going to be running the electric resistance heat so you don't have cool air blowing in the house. So you're gonna heat the air up with the electric resistance. So that's the second thing that happens. Now the third thing that's gonna happen is this R 24 volt power wire is gonna cross this normally open set of contacts is now closed and it's gonna come over and touch the O. So now you're gonna be powering the RVS, the reversing valve. And in heating mode, this particular unit does not power the reversing valve in heating mode. So if you power it, it's gonna turn into air conditioning mode. It's gonna reverse the flow of the refrigerant. So you have your outdoor fan motor is off. If you know anything about air conditioning mode, your fins out here get very hot. So if you're not drawing air across them, they're gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter out here, they're gonna be melting the ice off. That's the whole point. And at the same time, you have your output 24 volt wire heading to the, the indoor air handler to run your electric resistance strip heater so the temperature does not lower in the building during defrost. So that's how that system works. And you can tell all that right here on this schematic wiring diagram. Now, I know this was pretty in-depth in reference to the defrost board. I hope that helped you understand, and make sure you take advantage of the resources we have over at the website. We have thermostat wiring. Uh, we have a bunch of different thermostat wiring diagrams there for, for electric resistance heat or just a heat pump or air conditioning mode. So make sure you check those out, as well as all the other free resources there, such as the articles, the tips, the calculators, the quizzes, all that stuff. Also, I know it's heating season right now, but make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning. So we go over some of the, the components and the refrigeration cycle for a heat pump, and we show how to prepare a system for refrigerant, such as the pressure testing, the vacuum pumping, um, the standing vacuum test, also breaking the vacuum with refrigerant from the bottle and from the service valves. So in the middle of winter, if you were to do a heat pump, you, you're gonna need to be able to weigh in the correct amount of refrigerant into that system so that system runs accurately. And you do that by the line set length. So you, you weigh in the certain amount of ounces per lineal foot of the line set length. But anyway, you can check out the full outline and sample pages over at acservicetech.com slash acbook. We also have our physical products such as a thousand question workbook and quick reference cards available over at Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.